Hey folks, you are listening to Real Laughs on Real Radio 104.1. I am Mike Curley, and I am joined tonight with a caboodle of comedians. Yeah, yeah, I I had to go to the the thesaurus for that one. Caboodle of comedians. I like Uh, it. We got the godfather of Orlando comedy. Ken Miller's in the room with us tonight. Ken, how you doing, man? What's up, brother? I'm feeling good, man. Just got Uh, me smoking a cigar, so let's do it. (laughs) Nice and relaxed. Ready to go, huh? I'll answer okay. for him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I don't know. I smoked the dog. I, I smoked the dog cigar, so I, I might be a little loopy to this water. Ah, the, that the kind of cigar, right? Yeah. Now no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no way. No way. <laughs> I got a job, bro. <laughs> I couldn't tell because you stopped talking. I'm like, is he frozen or just ignoring me? I don't know which one it is. <laughs> uh, we also got the host of the Lowdown on Comcast Ooh. Xfinity, Mr. James John, is here with us. James, how you doing? I'm great, but I'd like you to refer to me by my new name, sir. Uh, Ken got a nickname. I want one too. I just looked at my bills this week and uh, mm-hmm. I am the godfather of debt so I'd like for you to refer to me <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you know how nicknames work but you can't give yourself your nickname I didn't give myself that my bills actually come <laughs> as that <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And of course, Monsters Real Radio winner Miguel Colon Jr. is with yes. us tonight. Miguel, how you doing? I'm good. I'd like to use my nickname, be a participant in Orlando comedy. <laughs> and uh I also got done smoking a cigar, but I only use the outside wrapper for what I need. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Waste not one not. I like it. <laughs> Tell you guys, I miss recording with you. You guys did Monday, Tuesday without me. Everything seemed to go pretty smoothly. In fact, I yeah. heard they were the best shows ever on Real Laps, according to <laughs> Ken Miller's Twitter feed. So yes. you know. Yes. I too like that. You know, I'm we got some stuff to talk about, but I just want to say, uh, I hate Kermit Gonzalez. I just want to put that out there. I despise Uh Kermit Gonzalez. If there's, if you guys don't know Kermit Gonzalez is, uh, we talk about him a lot on the show. He used to be my uh, co-host on my podcast, the obligatory podcast. Kermit is one of these guys that will just find the most disturbing stuff on the internet and send it to you in the middle of the day. Bruh. Oh my God! I, t- I, t- I actually had to tell him. I said, "Where do you get? Who who are you following?" <laughs> you, you know what he sent me. You <laughs> oh, know what he sent okay. me. I'm kind of sad because it's taking up a lot of my time now. An Instagram profile simply titled "Kids Getting Hurt." Yeah, yes. I followed that one. It's just little kids and horrible things happening to them, like parents <laughs> letting them fall off slides or backing cars into them or falling out of trees. And as much as I feel like a bad person for watching, I can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop. It's like, <laughs> I know what's going to happen to this kid. And uh, being a dad, I always got that little oh moment where I want to reach for him. And I realized this was filmed six years ago on VHS. This isn't yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, so, it's fine. That kid's so, limping somewhere right now. Just remember to look both ways. <laughs> you know? As much as I love Larry, him, I hate that guy. And then uh, just something else that irked me today. Uh, when it comes to sandwiches, where do you guys put your garnishes? Like, where do you put your garnishes on a sandwich? At, like the, it, at the top before the yeah. bread. The top bread. Yeah. Yeah. They're called toppings. They're yeah. called yes. toppings. I can't stand when I go to a restaurant and they bury like the lettuce and tomato under the meat. And now I got to take the sandwich apart at the table and put it back together. And I hate how Subway won't put mayonnaise right on the bread anymore. They're like, no, we got to put it on top. It's like, no, you put that down as a coating to keep the bread from getting all. Yeah. You know, all, right? Anything that needs to be applied with a knife gets yeah. applied on the bread. Yes. Then the yes. toppings on top. And here's another thing. Lettuce. It doesn't really have to happen on everything. Like the, every sandwich, they're just like, oh, lettuce? Like, no. Dude, I don't know what it is about me. I don't like lettuce on anything hot. Mm-hmm. I don't like lettuce yeah. on anything hot, kid. You know That's why? The same thing with me. Because it gets yeah. really Wilt steamed and, and like wilted and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I like Wendy's and I like lettuce on my burger every now and then. But by the time they wrap it up in the foil, I live yeah. three blocks away. By the time I get home, open it up, the bun's steamed, the lettuce is wilting, and they always give you the lettuce. That's the piece that was connected like to the bottom <laughs> stalk. So it's the more lettuce like wing. celery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's just like it was connected to the heart of the lettuce. Yeah. So it's hard. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys remember the McDonald's sandwich where they had the toppings on the side in the style? Yeah, the, the Mc, Mc, McDLT. McDLT. Yeah, yeah, McDLT. Okay. Yeah. I closed my eyes for a second when you said it. That's how I excited closed I got. My eyes <laughs> Bro, <laughs> the McDLT was the best damn hamburger that McDonald's it, what, had ever made. Because all the toppings were cold. The sandwich was piping hot. And it then was 100% it was, beef. 
That's and it was made was of good. styrofoam, so you knew two penguins died just to make it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what else I hate? Like, if I... I've been to some restaurants, and you guys too, when we travel, you, I try not to go to chains if I don't have to. I want to try a Mom. place that I can yeah. only find in that town. And some places you go to where they're known for their huge like sandwiches, like you saw on Food Network, and you go there knowing, okay, this is more of a meal meal than a sandwich. It just looks like a sandwich. But I hate when you go to a regular place and order a sandwich and you get it and it's more of an open face like there's no way i'm eating this without getting like a fork and knife like when you order a chicken parm sandwich and it comes out with a hamburger bun but the chicken is like yeah. overextended it's like dude i want a sandwich i want a I'm sandwich i didn't want chicken parm with a side of bread i know yeah. we've so, talked about it before la spada is the only place i like that because it's so much cheesesteak mm -hmm. on top of it yeah. that like you fork eat the first part and then you've got, and then you challenge yourself to the rest. But it does suck. Mike, you ever get those chicken sandwiches where you have to cut like chicken fingers off the side of it? Uh, they're just so big. Yeah. yeah. And restack yeah. it to make yeah. it. Into, yeah. No. So, no. you know what? I, I know that's petty stuff to be complaining about, you know, just, <laughs> just like sandwich stuff, but that's what my life's really come to with no kids around and can't get out of the house. I'm just like, it's the littlest thing. Sometimes going to pick up food is my only interaction for the day. So when I get a bad experience, experience there i'm just like well there goes this day this is oh all over I, here's one thing i hate that's petty mm -hmm. in a restaurant but um miguel and, and mike you both served and you probably already mm -hmm. know this don't make me ask you if you're my waiter to refill my drink mm -hmm. don't make oh, me do yeah, that yeah yeah if i'm my drink's halfway just slide in there with hey i got you another one sir and just walk yeah. away man brother i will give you the biggest tip if you don't make me keep asking you to refill my drink yeah mm -hmm. and if it's a mexican restaurant and you see i still have queso dip and I'm done with chips. Don't shame me. Don't shame me. <laughs> bring me, bring me some more. Don't just be like, oh, you wanted more. I still got like half a bottle of queso. I get it. I ate all of them on salsa because it's free, and now I want yeah. some more. Yeah, yeah. and keep with spinach dip. Don't bring me out a big, you know, yeah. eight ounce ramekin of spinach dip, and then bring me four chips because this yeah. ain't gonna work. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who are you, your family? What, what's up with the four chips? I'm, I got six people at the table. Like, yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah. Olive Garden, or Olive Garden, like breadstick. It's like me and somebody else, and they bring three. I'm like, yeah. don't do this. Don't yeah. make us choose. The, yeah. There's there's a comedian originally from Canada. Now he lives in Atlanta, I think, named Landry. Funny, funny yeah. dude. And yeah. he used to do, he's like, you know what's wrong with Olive Garden is I worked there. I was a waiter. You know our rule on breadsticks? It's one for everybody and then one for the table. He's like, that's a way to break up a family. All right? <laughs> yeah. so when you bring four breadsticks because there's four people and throw on that last one, you see people inhaling breadsticks just to get dibs on that yeah. last one. I've seen no. couples end their whole relationship because I put three breadsticks on the table and they had to figure <laughs> out right then and there if their spouse even, was worth that breadstick or not. I, I don't even play like that anymore. When I first go to a restaurant, let's say like Outback, I don't play mm -hmm. with them. I'm like, look, you see these kids? They're savages. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. have any meat <laughs> left on our steaks and we're still eating, we need two loaves of bread at all times. Yeah, it's all day, man. That, that, that extra yeah. breadstick is like Sauron's one ring. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it controls the whole table. You know? well, <laughs> hey, breadsticks for the elves. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I got to tell you guys, I've, I've been in my own head. Maybe that's why I'm feeling a little depressed and little things like sandwich toppings is getting to me. But, you know, I've just hit that point now where I, I, I really thought I'd be further in my life. Like I went overnight. I went from when I was like in my teens and early twenties going, I got time. I got all the time in the world to all of a sudden here I am 43 and I, where'd it go? Where'd it go? So I was, I was feeling a little low last night and I decided rather than hit the Jameson, I'd hit the internet and I tried to, I tried to reach out and see if I could find anyone who became Hold successful. Up. You hit the internet bit. while drinking Jameson? No, no. I skipped the Jameson, man. I can't drink Jameson alone. I'm a social. I'm a social drinker, drinker when it comes to whiskey, me, man. <laughs> it's the only thing. Yeah. Mike, you could have called her brother up. I would have came over there, man. Speak wow. speed, bro. Speak well, speed. I got, you can't even leave your house without Michelle's permission. <laughs> oh, you're, not no. coming, you're not coming across did, town to drink whiskey. Did you not know she was coming with me? That's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh so James now. is that James is that dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. coming right well, over. With the reason I bring it up, though, is there's actually a pretty good list of famous people who you just assumed they got famous and rich, you know, early on. But the truth is, 
you know, it, they were in the middle of their lives before things started popping for them. So I'm just going to read off some names here and uh, kind of give you an idea of when they consider their big breakthrough. And then I'll ask you uh, how old you think they were. Uh, this one, this one, first one's up for uh, Ken, actually. You can all answer. But uh, I saw this. And I was kind of shocked. Samuel Jackson. Yep. Samuel Jackson is in pretty yep. much every movie that comes out nowadays. Somehow, some way, mm -hmm. Samuel Jackson. He did a lot of minor roles, just nothing really breakthrough until he got uh, do the right thing. Spike Lee, crackhead. How old do you mm -hmm. How old do you guys think he was? No, he, he wasn't a crackhead and do the right thing. He was a he radio was a radio DJ. guy. Oh, th he was a crackhead in another Spike Lee movie because he was talking about I do it, I do. If you don't give me money, I crack an old woman over the head. I do it, and he also <laughs> and he was also in Juice. People don't realize he was, he was the that. dude in the bar in Juice. He had to pay yeah. him to get information. Yeah. Yep. And he was he was the dude on the computer in Jurassic Park. How old was he when he got that do the right thing that that he considers his breakthrough uh, put him on I, the map? I'm going I'm going to say 40. All right. Miguel, 40. what you got? I'm going to say 32. Okay. James Young. 43. 46. Wow. 46. Did you know Jackson's 900 years old? <laughs> yeah. He still <laughs> looks the same. Yeah. yeah bro. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, do the right thing was came 80, out of 89. 89, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because 1989, 30 years ago. You know. Mm -hmm. so, so he's 70 years old, 76 wow. years old. He's as old as the president. <laughs> All right. Wow. Next up, next up, Alan Rickman. You guys remember Alan Rickman? Mm -hmm. Passed away oh, yeah. what, a couple of years yeah. this year or two Die years hard. ago. Yeah. yeah. Die Hard was his first breakthrough movie, actually. How old was he? I'm going to go with this one, guys. I'm going to say he was 43. I I'm going to go with I'm going to go with 45. Five. 40 even. 41. 41 wow, yeah, years James old. closest yeah. to the pin. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How yeah, about man. these two are actually the same age or were the same age when success happened for him? John Hamm from Mad Men, actor, been in tons of stuff since. He's about, and J.K. Rowling. Got that. J.K. Rowling, mm -hmm. when her first uh, book got published there. What are you guys thinking? How old? John Hamm was already a certified stud, like an older looking dude when, by the time I saw him on uh, Mad uh, Men. Mad Men. And I'd never seen him anywhere before that, I don't think. Mm -hmm. It's funny so, because he was he had packed up in his house and was moving away yep. from L.A. when he got the call to come in for another read on Mad Men. Yep. So, side note, John Hamm's one of those dudes where you're like, that dude's a handsome dude. You look at yeah. him in movies, you're like, you like look at him, you're like, that dude, you you get happy when you see these guys in movies, you're like, all right, this dude's a badass. Because you, you know what Baby it is? Driver, Baby Driver, he was a badass. Mm -hmm. So he's how old? always put together. He always looks yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a bespoke uh, man. I would say I'm, 42. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go at 40. But but the thing, I'm going to go at 40. Only reason is every time I see John Hamm, he don't look like he over 50 years old. <laughs> no. And, no. Not, and nothing, bro. In For the last 20 years. Yeah. 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 John Hamm when he got Mad Men and J.K. Rowling when she got her first book published, both 36 years old. 36, okay. 36, okay. that's legal, so that, right? John, so John Hamm definitely looks like he smokes cigars mm -hmm. and drinks whiskey every morning then. Because he was, <laughs> at 36, he was definitely looking 45 and fresh, though. Really? You yeah, think so? Because I always, every time I see John Hamm and son, I'm like, yo, this dude looks great. Like, I would have never thought he was even close yeah. to 50. I thought he looked older when he was younger. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, he got that white Hollywood. He looks like, yeah. you know, white Hollywood always looks amazing. All yeah. right, just to give you guys an idea of a few more, Vera Wang, fashion designer, was 40 when she made it. Ray Kroc was 52 when he first got involved in the McDonald's Brothers, 56 yeah, when he bought it. his first, yeah, ahead. he did, 56 <laughs> when he took over the franchise. Stan Lee, 39 years old when he created the Fantastic yep. Four, which was his first big hit. And uh, Rodney Dangerfield, you guys know he was a comic, gave up, went back to selling flooring for a while, then started yep. doing comedy again. Mm -hmm. Uh but he got his big break on the Ed Sullivan show. How old do you think he was when he got that first TV appearance? He, he, he had to be in his 50s. Yeah. Um, you guys think of 50? I'd yeah. say 50, 55. 46 years old. 46 uh, years old. See, that's, 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 that's normal years. for comedians. I guess yeah. it's normal for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. for comedians, yeah. it's normal for us to be old. And when I say old, I mean, like, 40s. Yeah. Like, that's normal for comics to be like, because, you know, it used to take 15 to 20 years for, I mean, not now because of the internet, but mm -hmm. any comic coming through the 70s and 80s, they were 35, 40 before they got their major break. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. Well, don't go anywhere. We got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a new TikTok craze that has teenagers getting their alcohol early. Stay tuned right here. Real Laughs 104.1.
Welcome back. You're still listening to Real Laughs. I'm Mike Hurley, joined in studio with Miguel Colon Jr., Ken Miller, and of course, James Jean. Now, guys, apparently there's a new TikTok craze or fad out there. Generation Z is getting creative, man. Uh, it's called Boozing Bubbies. Bubbies, as in like Jewish grandmothers. And what they're doing is since you're now having to wear a mask basically everywhere, they're taking advantage of that. They're wearing their masks, but dressing up like little old ladies so they can go into liquor stores and purchase alcohol underage. And some of these people are getting pretty in depth. Like I saw one woman, she had, or one woman, look, it's even fooling me. One girl even had a walker with the golf balls on the bottom and put the big uh, shawl over her head, had her mask on. And they they do videos of them going in and coming out with bottles and wine and liquor. And I got to tell you, as much as I'm like, that's wrong, you shouldn't be doing that. Part of me is like, I have a newfound hope for the younger generation. Because <laughs> that is some creative well- I'm going to have to disagree, Mike. I think they're doing too much. Like back in the day, <laughs> all you had to do was find the nearest homeless man and you just give him a couple bucks and he would go buy it for you. Yeah, <laughs> but now, nowadays, man, like these kids live in better neighborhoods. Uh, there ain't yeah. no homeless man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As Ken's kids, they got no homeless people in their neighborhood. No, the uh, yeah. homeless men are where we at, bro. I call the police. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't coming up in my neighborhood <laughs> messing up my good HOA, bro. Ken, are you a Karen? Bro, heck yeah. <laughs> Yo, bro, look here, man. Look here, dog. Hey, I got a gated community. Ain't nobody. I, bro, I be t- if, if you in my neighborhood and I don't know you, I be like, um, <clears throat> hey, this is Tom Whiteman. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say there is some guys in my neighborhood. I've never seen them before. And he's driving this truck that has USPS on it. They'd be like, um, that's the postal service, sir. Oh, okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good disguise for a criminal. <laughs> I ain't yeah. falling for no dog. Uh uh-uh. uh. I just I'm heard that a FedEx guy now. shot somebody. Ken, I've no, been no. in your neighborhood, bro. It is a nice neighborhood. The funny thing is, if you call the cops for somebody in your neighborhood and you stand outside, you getting arrested. Not if I use the voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. the, if you standing outside when they get there, they're like, "All yeah. right, come on, Tyrone." No, no, the <laughs> key is the key is can lay down on the ground, handcuff yourself, and they're like, "All right, we already already got one of the suspects." <laughs> <laughs> this this really didn't affect me when I was a teen. Uh, I believe it or not, wasn't invited to a lot of parties in high school, <gasps> and then and I know, shocking, right? But on top of that, I wasn't really a drinker until after I got out of high school. I didn't start drinking until later in life. So, did you guys have any special ways of procuring alcohol when, or did you guys? Do you remember at what age you were when you had your first drink? Oh, yeah, like I want to say fifteen. Fifteen. And- yeah, because um, I played a lot of sports, so all the jocks would have parties, and they would always have alcohol there. But the funny thing is, if the jocks could prove we're just going to stay in this spot, we're not going to go anywhere, we're not going to drive, let's just say we had certain athletic employees that would buy us the booze. James, this is 30 years ago. Name them. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still live in the same town. No, <laughs> and they're still alive. And that's so, fine. And if they're still teachers, they're looking for a reason not to go back to school. This yeah. Right? And James is like, and let's just say if we let them take pictures of our junk in the shower, <laughs> everything was cool. But they no, were cool. They were no, cool, right? I, I offered. He said no. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I remember the cool coaches, you know, the ones that you yeah. can look up to like a dad, they get alcohol, they'd mm-hmm. often let you sleep with their wife, you know, the yeah. good ones. Only if you were good. You had to be a good player to sleep with the wife, bro. You couldn't be, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you couldn't yeah. be a bad player. What about you, Miguel? How old were you when you had your first drink, man? I think really like ninth grade, whatever age that was, is when I really had drinks. Because I got drunk once before in like the eighth grade, but... Mm-hmm. I think I had like two shots and I was a kid. Like I snuck them out and I got drunk. But the oh, wow. ninth grade is like when I started drinking, like I'll have a beer, I'll hang out and have a beer. But it was when I was like 17 years old, I had this glorious job. I lived in South Carolina on the Naval Weapons Station. Ken, you know, like the, like the, like the, the PX or, mm-hmm. or the, uh, yeah. So I worked at the mini Mart, which was like the seven day store or the little mini PX or whatever. And basically, it was like a small convenience store run by the government for military personnel and their dependents only. I was the inventory guy. And how old (laughs) were you? I was 17. I was 17. So 17, but in charge of inventorying stuff, including alcohol. Yeah, and here's the best part. The inventory wasn't really, they didn't know what they got. Basically, there was a big government warehouse on an Air Force base about 15 miles away. 
and they would bring a truckload of stuff and be like, here, just put this on the shelves. Like, it wasn't like we ordered anything. The only thing we ordered was uniform stuff at the uniform store. Mm. So I started being like, guys, I will go pick up the inventories for us. And I started going out to Cactus Car Wash where my buddy Chris worked and borrowing a, like, Econoline van. Because I was supposed to go in, like, our little truck. And anyone I know, I will get people to vouch for this. They will tell you of the year I worked there, of the glorious year of I sold cigarettes out of my house. I sold alcohol out of my house. I would go to a Waffle House with a box of cigarettes, and cops would buy cigarettes from me. Because I would go to this warehouse, and the guys there were other just, like, not DOD employees, just civilians. And they were like, what do you need? And I'm like, they told me just to fill the van up. And they're like, fill the van up. And it got to the point oh where it was like God. it was our it was our Ottawa Wild Airport, Mike. It, it was, was our, like, like GI Goodfellows yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah, and we just took everything. I I was I was 18 years old when I left that job, and for another three years, I never bought a razor because I had so many Gillette Mach Three razors because I would just take entire shipments that came in. But everybody went to my high school knew about it. People would put orders in for parties. Like, hey, I, I got kegs because we had kegs over there. And the best part was they hired me because one of my best friends, Nate, got fired there for stealing food. And they were like, oh, this guy got fired for stealing uh, like Hot Pockets and making them in the back. And I wow. was like, well. Lost your job for some damn Hot Pockets. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I came in there like, I think I'm going to change things around here, guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? My buddy's name? Or... No, you can't. You can't like incriminate anyone. You can't yeah, say. Yeah, hey, tell yeah, anyone, yeah. man. Nate Dowdle, my best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my best friends growing yeah. up, Nate Dowdle. <laughs> Yo, See what you know the rules, Miguel. Once I sell out, I get the hell out. <laughs> yeah, I, y'all want to know his address? Text me. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if you go to our Facebook page, he you works know. in North Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Ew, man. Now let me Hold tell up. you about when we sold dope. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Nate Dowdle, that's my homeboy, man. And he was also the guy getting me yeah. beer when he worked there because he was 16 mm. working there. Oh, and grandma. he was the one getting me beer. Right, and then, yeah, and then he lost his job. And I was like, man, you're doing it too small time. BX was like, man, we never thought we'd miss Nate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, le I left and they bought me a cake. My last day there, all the ladies bought me a cake who worked there. And they were like, you were just so sweet. Thank you. And I was like, thank you. And the very last day I left, I had loads of cars of my homeboys like, hurry up. This is it. Like, the new guy is going to come in, do the inventory, and be like, what has been going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you leave the job? Because I was done. I was graduated high school. And I was like, I've been making so much money selling cigarettes and everything. I was like, I don't think I need to work for a while. And so I was Man. like, let me just take the time off. Because it's getting the cartons for free and selling them for $10 a carton. And we were probably doing That's like... cheap, man. Yeah, 50 cartons. I mean, I was doing at least 50 cartons every couple days. Wow. Oh, my God. For free. I sold them to teachers. Wow. I sold them to teachers. I would come into school with a bag and go to Miss D's class. And then I would and, give and her the bag. And if you were on base, I totally believe that. I was out, I was right outside of base on that part, I but totally it was just totally it was one of those schools that had you know how those schools are that are connected to a base where it's like the high school isn't base, but it's full of so many base kids. Yeah. And uh yeah, Miss D didn't care, man. She bought cigarettes from me. I remember she smoked Pyramids 100s. I will never forget that because I never heard of that brand before. And I had to Pyramid. order that brand. I had to order that brand. I had to put an order in from the warehouse to get a product to make her happy. How come, how come she sound like she's that old black woman who's seen it all, smoking them long, skinny cigarettes? Miss Deese is an old white woman who's seen it all, whose husband was a bondsman. And uh, <laughs> she taught health and smoked cigarettes. And like, if you would ever try to bring up Miss Deese, how are you going to try to teach us health? You smoke cigarettes. She's like, well, how are you going to talk to me when you suspend it? Like, that's what she's saying. <laughs> I love her. I like her style, bro. Mm -hmm. oh, man. The first time I ever had alcohol was nine years old. And and only because hold up, hold up. Let me get to it. I get yeah. to the real only the because real you time. were a latchkey kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, I wish, dude. I'm bro, I'm number eight of eleven kids. It's always somebody home. Okay. Yeah. You can't bring you couldn't even bring no girl over. It was somebody <laughs> in the house. You could never. But my mama, I think we're eight or nine. My mama gave us something called, I don't know if y'all remember private stock. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mama oh, yeah. let us taste private stock when we were eight or nine years stock. old. And I was like, I'll never drink again. And then the <laughs> next time I actually really had alcohol, and Miguel, you can attest to this. I was in the military. I was 18 years old. I just got the base. And I and back then you had roommates. Like you actually shared the room. It, you yeah. next to each other. And uh, my roommate said, hey, man, take my car, go to the class six, which was the ABC store on base and go get some 40s. 
I didn't even have a license. I drove his car. I get to the classics. I get all these beers, and I'm like shaking. I'm like, oh my god! I'm <laughs> going. And I was like that model soldier. Like yeah. I, I got promoted quick. I go up there and I hand the, the lady my ID, and I'm like shaking. She looks at it. She says, "Okay, you're good." And I leave. I drive back to the base. Once again, no driver's license. All I had was a military ID. I get to the base. I tell my roommate, "I said, dog, they let me buy alcohol." Oh my God! He says, "Yeah, dude, you're 18. You can buy alcohol on base." Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) and I didn't know that, man. So the first time I really got drunk, I was drinking the Mickey Deuce Deuce, (laughs) Mickey Deuce Deuce with the big hornet on it. The hornet was on it. Yeah, and that was the first time I was 18 years old when I first got legit drunk because I was a beer Hennessy drinker before Ugh. I became a comedian then I became I became the crown drinker but yeah that was the mm-hmm. first time dude I, I bought it myself and I was super excited like I did something illegal and they was like fool everybody can buy drinks on base with a beer yeah. <laughs> oh man that's funny that's hilarious man I didn't realize you guys could drink at 18 on the base on the they base, don't do yeah. it in, they, they don't do it on bases now man it's 21 now bro uh, it's horrible it went down yeah. like 2010 or 2012. Yeah, uh, and James, you gotta understand. It was 1995. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So this is like 95, dude. You could drink on base. You if you was 18, bro. We man, I dog. I, we could do a whole <laughs> segment on, on on how crazy it was for the military for a young kid. You ever go? Did you ever used to go to the NCO club when you became an NCO? Yeah, yeah. In Arizona, it was called the La Hacienda, bro. That's we, was at the, we was at the we was at the NCO club all the time, bro. That was in the nineties when when the bad boy and the little yeah. and, and you were booty based on chicks, girl. Yeah, that was that was that was when twerking started. Yeah, bro. as we were just talking about, guys, with the uh, younger people using masks to get away with stuff, it seems like masks are coming in handy for them. There's actually still a group of people out there that just, you know, the guys who didn't want to wear masks, the girls who didn't want to wear masks that said, well, science doesn't back it. And since then, science has come out backing it that you should wear a mask. It's just the way to go. Uh, but now the anti-maskers are doing something out of kind of a silent protest. They're actually wearing masks that don't do anything. Basically, they're wearing masks made of lace or mesh or screen. So if you look at them, it looks like they're wearing a mask so people will leave them alone. But they go around laughing with joy and happiness that they know their mask isn't stopping anything. And I just wonder, at that point, why don't you just wear the mask? Like, you're going out of your way. It's like, it's like okay, I'll wear a condom, but I'm going to poke holes in it first. It's like unraveling a Reese's, a Reese's in the bedroom with the lights are off, so yeah. the girl thinks you're putting a condom on, but really, you're just opening up some chocolate. Yo, so, that is some yeah. devious, Bruh, <laughs> devious. People, people are so big to be militant against these masks yeah. that you will put a pair of panties on your face <laughs> mm. Instead of just putting on a dead, just put a, just put the mask. On. Like what you you're really like, man. I'm I'm a I'm gonna go out I'll here show and Victoria's them. Secret. I'm gonna show you guys. You I'm know, gonna it's, show you. It's just funny to me because it's the same people that always go. I have a right to open carry my weapon for protection, and then you're like, well, can you wear a mask just you know for protection? No, no, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. no, no. That is the government imposing their will upon me. <laughs> well, guys, don't go anywhere. We gotta take a break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about a pizza place that's doing some inappropriate advertising. Stay tuned right here on Real Labs One Hundred Four Point One. Welcome back. You're still listening to Real Labs. I'm Mike Riley, joined by Miguel Colon Jr., Ken Miller, and of course, James John. Uh, it is July 22nd, and I gotta say, guys, uh, you know when we're doing birthdays, we're looking up celebrity birthdays. Usually, it's like one person we know and 25 TikTok or YouTube stars under the age of 12, which have done more <laughs> with their life than I will ever do. Apparently, yep. uh, we actually this was a this was a big day, big day for celebrities. I mean, these are these are some household names here. We got Selena Gomez, happy birthday, David Spade, happy birthday, William Defoe, wrestler Shawn Michaels, Alex Trebek. Beck, Danny Glover, John Leguizamo, Albert Brooks, and Don Henley. That's like, those are some heavy hitters, man. Those are like, I would say A to high Bs. Man, let me tell you something, bro. I grew Mm. up a wrestling fan. And when you say wrestling, (laughs) that's the fake stuff. Wrestling is the real. Yeah. (laughs) Ain't nothing more embarrassing than the the sweet chin music by Shawn Michaels. Yes. (laughs) I don't care, bro. One of my favorite clips, next to the Stone Cold Stunner, one of my yeah. favorite clips is Shawn Michaels is in the hallway talking to the Triple H, Triple H 
Mm-hmm. And um, and he's saying that Vince McMahon saying that, that DX wasn't controversial. He said, not controversial, not controversial. And then he goes down the hallway and sweet chin music. Everybody walking yeah. down. It's the yeah. funniest thing I've ever seen, bro. So I'm my birthday shout out, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> probably the greatest wrestling finishing move next to the stunner and the figure four. Oh, no. Uh, I got to give it up to the rock bottom. I loved it because the pageantry behind the rock bottom was so good. He would get yo, the crowd yo, pumped up. This is, yo, so you telling me if I yeah. rock bottom you, you done? Yeah. Yo, yeah. come on. Compared but, to getting kicked in the chin, the uh-huh. figure four or Stone Coast kicking you in the stomach and pop and then pouring a beer on your face? Yo, the rock I lo- bottom, bro. I love Crazy, it. bro. I love, I, love, I, love the, I love the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter okay. would drop the heart. Yeah, and I'll tell you what's more embarrassing, though, is Ravishing Rick Rude having your girlfriend's oh. face painted oh. on his junk when he comes out with his little panties on. And he twirls it at you. And he yeah. twirls it at you. Yeah, that's nasty. Did, yeah. I, did I just read something yesterday? I don't know if this was more wrestling hype or actually happened. Did Ray Mysterio lose his eyes or something? What? Did he go blind? No, I, those are contacts. No, Rey I Mysterio actually I saw a news article yesterday. And I think it was Ray Mysterio in some backyard match. Uh, maybe it was one of those fake news sites. Did they blindside him? Yeah, ah! he did. <laughs> what? Ken, you got it? He yeah, he did. Because I typed Ray Mysterio and it put lose his eyes was the first thing. So I, wow. he was wrestling wow. somebody um, on live TV. And uh, I guess he was wrestling to Seth Rollins. I could be wrong. And they said Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins. Seth Rollins threw up after he saw the eye come out. Oh. Oh. And, oh. and Ray Mysterio, I'm talking about, has been. In, in wrestling, huge. But Lord have mercy. Yeah, like he was, he was like one of the legit extreme. Like he was one of them extreme wrestlers, yo. He was like he was Kermit to me. He was a little little feisty dude, like Kermit, yo. Luchador though, really yeah, 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 high flying, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, Mike, yes, that's right. Yeah, they said he lost his eye, man. Yeah, I know that. Oh, my God. Uh, what I I thought Mike was talking about, you know, Ray wears those weird those contacts. Weird contacts, oh, yeah. yeah. Man, do, do you have to do like a cool wrestling line when you rip out someone's eye? Like, see you never. Yeah, Seth Rollins threw up. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, never mind. Uh, They played too much. It was a gag. (laughs) Oh. I had to to keep looking. So they said Seth. Yeah, it was an eye for eye match. They said Seth plucked Ray's eyeball out and puked after the fact because it was so disgusting. However, if you're worried about Ray losing his eye, rest assured it was a total gag. Know uh, that WWE is not going to let one of their talented lose an eye for a wrestling hell, match. That's so, what I was thinking. So Ray, we're, like, uh, we're just Ray's propagating Ray's, fake news? Is yeah. that what we're doing? Ray's Ray's like, like, Come on, you guys, if you watch wrestling, you've seen yeah, like Hell in the Cell yes. when, when um, Undertaker threw um, Mankind from the top of the cell mm-hmm. onto the, the, the announcer's table. I knew he, mm-hmm. I said he dead. He dead. Yeah. Then they, they, they took him off. He comes back, climbs back up. Undertaker throws him through the ring on the th- on the thumbtacks. I'm yes. like, Bruh. I remember that. I remember, I, remember, that, yeah. I remember watching wrestling and being like, wow, Owen who, Hart's making this. Who look was real. the wrestler that came around the comedy <laughs> scene for a while and would let us hold his belt? Was it Jack or something like that? Yeah, New Jack. New Jack. New and Jack. like he, but New he Jack sh- was the true extreme. Like and he murdered somebody in real he life. He showed up, he showed up at an open mic when I we were at Boardwalk Bowl. I was hosting. He's like, Hey, I'm New Jack. And I'm like, Oh, I'm I'm old Mike. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, You don't know who I am? And you know yeah, <laughs> when you, when you got like thirty five people on a list and only twenty spots, someone comes up and goes, "I'm on the list." And I am. Your name's not on the list as a host. You're like, "Not this week." You're not. Mm. And he's like, "Someone, someone needs to tell you about me." And I'm like, "He's like, I'm a wrestler." I'm like, "Well, we're putting up comedians tonight." So yeah. And yeah. then, but then I talked to him afterwards, and he turned out to be a cool guy. And Such I actually cool guy. had Such fun cool conversations. Guy. Then he would show up at open mics with his belt no. and let us take pictures with it and everything else and he actually uh a couple of wrestlers like mankind and uh roddy roddy piper actually had a little bit of comedy careers going in the uh yeah. mid 2000s yeah. right hey, and they were they were getting better it. gigs than us yeah, yeah. Bruh, hey, hey you remember rob van damn came yeah. to the other yeah. bar Bruh, so i don't know if y'all know the story rob van damme came to the other bar with sean finnerty and I was super excited because, you know, I'm a wrestling fan. You know, RVD, I'm a super fan. Mm-hmm. And he asked for time. I says, hey, man, there's no celebrity here. Everybody gets five minutes, period. That's it. Mm-hmm. He gets on stage, five, four minutes light, nothing. Six minutes light, nothing. So he won't get off stage. And I give him the light. He says, that ain't been five minutes. Like, he was really mad. 
Angel so blessed. Angel blessed. Remember Angel? Mm -hmm. Angel had been to jail for like attempted murder or something like that. Mm -hmm. Angel walks up to the stage, points to his watch, points to RVD and says, you done. RVD was like, I kick everybody ass in here. And so he gets off stage. So I go outside and talk to him. He's like ready to fight Angel. I says, hey, man, look, what you do is fake. That guy right there, <laughs> he been in the real prison. Rob Van Dam was like, hey, man, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Hey man, I, I, bro, he, he not, bro, you know how they run and slide out the ring? Yeah. He slid right underneath the bars of the other bar and was gone, bro. Didn't you? Uh, didn't yeah, you have Pyro the Dudley brothers? Everything. Didn't you have the Dudley brothers? Yeah, show the Dudley, one, of well, one of the Dudley brothers came to the show. Um, I've met Rob Van Dam. He came. He's came to the show. I've met Mankind. Um, I I was on a flight to Albany and um um bad badass Billy Guns was on my oh. flight. And I, I got to take a picture of him. I, I was I was friends with um Scott Steiner. I met Scott Steiner at the first um um uh, Monsters in the Morning comedy competition. Yeah, and he remembered me. He had, he bought my DVD and everything, and we had a good talk, man. And uh, that's and we right. He kept like, coming back. He's huge. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah he got saved. Like he's like a Christian now. He doesn't mm -hmm. like drink a cuss, even though he was drinking with me. I don't I don't even know. He's like I don't even drink anymore. I'm like what are, what you drinking? Like I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys. I wanted to get your take on this with the cancel culture we have going on. All right. There's, awesome. there's a lot of times when I don't want to speak up but in the back of my head, I'm like, maybe I'm evil. Cause I see no problem with that whatsoever, but I don't want to put stuff like that out there. But this one actually irked me a little bit. Uh, there's a pizza shop in Ohio called East of Chicago pizza. They put up a billboard. It was a picture of pizza and the caption they put next to it was simply cause fat people are harder to kidnap. <laughs> Facts on facts Bro. on facts. That uh, was that was it. Yeah, Fat people just just implying yeah. why not have yourself a pizza because you won't get kidnapped. Believe it or not, or maybe you will. Tons of complaints the first day. Enough so true. much. Enough yeah. so much that uh, he took the billboard down. But see, in my head, I'm thinking that's kind of funny. You know, no, that's, yeah. it's, no, it's, that's very it's, funny. No, man, you look at that board in Walmart. Show me one fat kid that's missing. <laughs> no, 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 man, and they don't no. CGI them fat. No, no. they like no. no. They, 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 let, me, they, let me tell you, when they do the age progression, they don't make them fatter. They stay the same skinny kid. The same. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Those age progressions take into consideration. Yeah. Like join Plant Fitness and go three to four yeah. times a day. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Where, I, yeah. where I live, there's a, uh, a McDonald's inside our Walmart. If you ever see a fat kid missing on a wall, he's at that McDonald's in the back of that Walmart. Okay. A McDonald's yeah. inside of a Walmart just sounds like where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> on, on top of that, James and Miguel, that would be great merch after the show. If you had oh a joke gosh. about fat people are harder to kidnap, I got a whole from a comedian. I, yeah, I got a whole, I got a whole piece said. on it. I got a piece on it too, just a quick piece about it. Yeah. Just talking about when you kidnap me, you got to steal me and a CPAP machine. You know? <laughs> yeah. So Miguel, what you should have did was you should have wrote to that pizza place, and when they put that up underneath, you should have put. Author Miguel Colon yeah. Jr. I'm actually gonna sue him now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should. You should. I got your back, bro. I'm gonna be your witness. Yeah, you're just gonna be behind me out of breath, like I hey, we uh, eat the pizza. Hey, you got some pizza? Let's do a pizza, man. Yeah. Hey, go yeah. ahead, keep the sign. That's just right. one of those things a lot of people nowadays bring up that Wesley Snipe, Sylvester Stallone flick, um, Demolition Man. Where yeah. it's the future and everything is so PC, so PC, so PC. Like, I'm happy that we're making such changes now. But at the same time, that we just doesn't jump out to me as something that, like, yeah. nah. Miguel, yes. James, for lack of better, you guys are both larger guys. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mike, I'm going to stop you right there. You could put me and Miguel on the billboard if we get yeah. We, yeah. yeah, we should. Hey, me, and Jay, me and James would be on the billboard riding those two motorcycles for the Guinness Book of World Records. Yes. But it was the two fat guys. Bruh, I almost spit my water out. Bruh. 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 Give me some pizza. Yo, son. Yo. I want the little, I want the little horn. Yeah. Yo, that was my. MySpace picture when I first started MySpace. The two big two guys riding the scooter. Oh, hey, that's how I know your age. Like, if if I show you that picture and you're like, "What is that?" I'm like, born like in '95. Yeah, yep. had to have been yep. at least. Yep. We gotta get out of here in just a few minutes. Uh, before we do though, I just wanted to uh, ask you guys 
I've lived in Florida since I was eight years old, South Florida, Treasure Coast, Orlando. And it seems like just in the past couple of years, I found out places within 35 to 40 minutes of me that I never knew existed. And I love them. Like uh, just last year was the first time Ross Padgett booked me for a show. I went out to Mount Dora. I had heard yeah. of Mount Dora, but I'd never been there. And my God, it's one of my favorite places to go now, even during the pandemic. Like some of the shops are open, but you can still go down there. Just walk around. They got a beautiful downtown area. They got the airboat rides and uh, just beautiful open air parks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Winter Garden. Love I never Winter knew Garden. about Winter Garden until uh, Kermit Gonzalez booked me for a show. I went down there. I'm like, how come I've never just come out and enjoyed a night down here in downtown Winter Garden? So sure. I guess what I want to ask you guys, is there any places like around you, Central Florida, that you didn't re you didn't recognize or hear about till later on, or is there places like you think like I guess just nice little kept secrets that people oh, should man. check out? I'll tell you one man. If you want to see just a scenery of Florida that you're not used to, go to Claremont. Claremont's full yes. of hills. Beautiful I love hills. the hills of Claremont. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and in fact, the Claremont Performing Arts Center sits on top of the hills over there. It's beautiful. It's and you look the down there. Um, no, no it's Ron Feingold's room. Remember Mike Weldon? Yeah, I yeah. used to have a. He used to have a room down there back That's in like two thousand Dak, Dak is it Dak? Dak Racco. Dak Racco. Yeah, I did yep. that room. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You're right. Claremont's a beautiful area, and just if you're on fifty, and all of a sudden you start hitting those hills, you feel like you're in a different state. You're like, we Always, shouldn't have valleys yeah. and stuff. Kind of reminds you like Lower North Carolina or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 You're after. Right and what about you? Like places you like to go check I, out? I love Winter Park. Winter yeah, yeah. Park to the point where where we we're, we're probably going to sell our house in a year or two, and we're either going we're probably going to move to Winter. Park. Winter Park's bigger than what people actually yeah, realize. Winter, uh, yeah, and it's so it's one of we you know we're 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 in the APK now, and there's nothing to do. Like there's no yeah. bars to hang out, no where to. Winter Park, you can walk somewhere and have a good night. And you, you, know got, college, and you got College Park in downtown Park, right yeah. there. And the Winter Cabo, Park you know? is brunch capital. Like, yeah, if you, you like yeah, to get yeah, up yeah. And, and go on a Sunday to a nice brunch, get some mimosas, Winter Park has so many options for you to walk home and have great places to eat and drink. Yeah. And I love Winter Park, too. And, and like Jane said, walk. You yeah, walk. Yeah. drive. You well, walk, walk right, yeah. I live not too far from one of the uh, Sunrail train stations. So mm. we've hopped on that before with the kids. So they're just excited to be on the train. Then when we go to Winter Park, we grab some yeah. or lunch, grab some ice cream. But we got to be back on that train, you know, because yeah. otherwise we're stuck up there. James, what about you? Nice little area. Like you're down in the Kissimmee St. Cloud area. Um, years ago, St. Cloud was right next to Kissimmee, considered old and country. Mm -hmm. But if you go to St. Cloud now, they've really mm -hmm. built it up in certain areas. And you can go to some nice mom and pops down there. I mean, my favorite barbecue place is there, Jimmy Bear Barbecue and whatnot yes, yes, baby. so people don't realize st clouds really come up like as far as what they have to offer like that but i was gonna say winter garden because um we went to ken's wife's birthday party i had never been to winter garden down there so we got to go to that upscale restaurant and yeah, i saw man. all those other restaurants down there nice little downtown little shops little eating nice bars we went to afterwards so i like winter garden yeah winter garden yeah that was a sad yeah. night too bro yeah i yeah. know your father passed yeah, my brother passed peace. away that night that's a peace. sad night man but yeah. I got drunk because he's an alcoholic, so it was for pops. Yeah. <laughs> in, your, in your memory, pops. In your memory, pops. I tip my 40 to your memory. <laughs> well, guys, unfortunately, we're out of time for tonight. Check us out on YouTube. Listen to us on the iHeart app anytime you want. Uh, past episodes. Also, check out our other uh, shows, Monsters in the Morning, The Jim Colbert Show, News Junkie, and, of course, Tom and Dan. Thank you so much for listening to us tonight. I'm Mike Gurley. I'm behind on behalf of Miguel Colon Jr., James John, Ken Miller, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.